Hey everyone, welcome to my new tutorial. Today I want to show you how you can easily make this funny retro-futuristic arcade animation and it will be mostly about animation and applying the right materials and if you enjoyed this video please leave a like, it will really help my channel to grow and if you're new to the channel and you'd like to see content like this in the future please hit that subscribe and additionally bell button if you want to get notified as well when I release something new. And if you're new to the world of 3D and Blender and you want to become a 3D illustrator, go and check out my courses that are carefully designed to teach you beginner and intermediate skills in quickest and most effective way. For example, with the new Ultimate 3D bundle, you can go from simple cubic designs all the way to full character illustration in a matter of weeks. So if you're interested, please go check out the link in the description. Let's jump right into empty blender file and first of all I want to delete everything so just select everything you see press X and delete We'll create everything on our own and now just press shift A and let's add a plane and now I will tap into the edit mode and let's press S and 2 to scale these two times Enter to confirm and now I'll press S then X additionally to tweak this a little bit further just like that I think this will be enough for the shape of the game console and now press E to extrude and now E again, and now just select these two vertices by holding shift, press G, then X, and create the slope, just like that. And now to add some more visual interest, we can press Ctrl R, and create a loop cut right here. And now go for face select by pressing 3, and alt click this loop, press alt E, and extrude faces along normals, and just extrude it inside like this. You can additionally press S for even scaling, and just confirm. And now select this face in the front, press I to inset and now E to extrude. So this will be very simple shape. And now we can press Shift D to duplicate this face. Right click on the mouse to release it in place and press P and enter to separate this into a new object. We have it right here. So tab out, select the new object. Go into the edit mode, select all by pressing A and press I to inset. Just like that. And now press Ctrl I. To invert the selection press X and delete faces. Now we'll create some more loop cuts so press Ctrl R and create a loop cut right here slide it down just like that and release and now one more and now we can create one more here right click to release it in place and press Ctrl B to bevel to create a little gap there press X and delete that face and now go for face select again by pressing 3 select this face and delete it as well and now press A and extrude, so this will be like little buttons and lights and a label or something. Um, just to add some more visual interest, and now let's select the object, tap into the edit mode, select the top face and hold Shift S and switch cursor to select it. And now tab out, let's press Shift A and let's add a circle, make sure you are adding a new object that you are not in the edit mode. And just click here and modify number of vertices to 12, I want to keep this fairly low poly. And now tab in. Switch to the vertex select by pressing 1, press E to extrude and press Z to lock this on Z axis, just like that. Let's do this once again, so press E then Z again and scale it down, just like that. Press F to fill, now I to inset and E to extrude this down. So this will be like a little holo projector or something, so let's press Shift D to duplicate this, right click to release and press again P and enter to separate this into a separate object. Now tab out, select the new object, tab in, and we can press E to extrude and S to scale. I want to create this kind of like a funnel shape that we'll use um, to make the projector, but for now I will just tab out and hide this. And now let's create some environment for the game animation. So let's press Shift A and let's add a plane like this. Press G then Z and move it up just like that. Um, make sure you're in the object mode so you're moving origin point as well. And now tab in and we can scale this on Y axis. So press S then Y, scale it up a little bit. Uh, make sure you're not scaling it on X axis. I want this to be two meters um, long exactly. Now select these two vertices and press E then Z to extrude this just like that. We'll create some kind of small corridor and now press E then Y and extrude it like that. You will see why I'm making this part as well. And let's now slice this up a little bit. So let's press Ctrl R and create a loop cut right here. And one more here as well and one there. So select these faces, make sure you're in the face select, press I to inset and extrude some shape just like that here as well. And here I want to extrude these separately, so press 
I to inset first and I again to separate that and press E to extrude. So this is kind of a like a science fiction greeble, um, really just to add some visual interest um, to the corridor, the spaceship will be flying through. And now let's select this and maybe add some inset, press I again to make this single again and extrude here as well. And now we can replicate this, so go to the modifiers tab and let's add the array modifier and we want to go negative one direction on the X axis and let's create something like 20 copies. So this is fairly long. And now we can also set up our animation um, right away. So let's set the end of the animation to frame 120. Let's go to the output settings and let's set this to 30 FPS. And I want to modify the resolution as well, something like 1600 to 1200, or you can go square, you can go 1200 times 1200. Um, that's a nice resolution for Instagram, for example. And now for this to work, we need to move this a little bit on the X axis. So let's press G then X and let's move it like four meters or something that should be enough and let's press i and insert location keyframe now scrub through the timeline to the frame 120 let's press g then x and enter 20 let's confirm and press i and insert location once again so that created our animation but it's non-linear so hover over the timeline press t and switch to linear and that will make this moving in constant speed. So that's what we want. And now let's press Alt H to see how this works with the funnel. Um, we can see this is maybe a little bit too large and a little bit high up. And if you want to change the location of this without disturbing the animation, you can just expand this part right here and you should see tracks like this for the object. And if you expand the transforms, you can select the Z location track separately, press X and delete it. So you are now able to move this freely on a Z axis without disturbing the X axis animation, just like that. So let's now select the funnel, press Shift D, we'll need another copy later. So let's press H again. And now select the funnel again, shift click our scrolling environment, and we'll need to do a Boolean operation here. So make sure you're in modifiers panel so you can see what's happening there and I will use bull tool add-on if you have trouble hearing what I'm saying um, just look in the description there's the name of the add-on and then just go to the preferences add-ons search for the add-on and activate it and now these shortcuts should work for you so by holding control let's press asterisk and that should create this boolean intersect operation which is what we are interested in and it might look messed up like i have it here most of the time it's due to normals so just select these objects one by one tab into the edit mode press a to select all and shift n to recalculate normals you can see how it changed and right now um this is displayed properly and if you scroll we have the scrolling corridor in the funnel but there is a little cutout so maybe we can make this a little bit smaller so select the corridor object let's go to the frame one we can enable x-ray and just select this geometry right here and we can press g then y and move it closer so it better fits the funnel inside something like that maybe even closer and the next thing i want to do let me disable the x-ray view is to press shift a and let's add a plane press g then z and move it up scale it down and i'll create some kind of a small arcade spaceship so let's select these front vertices press m and merge at center and now we can select this edge right there right click and subdivide select these two vertices press j to join they'll create a slice there now select everything press e to extrude and now let me enable auto merge select these vertices press g twice and just slide them down and merge them so we have a simple triangle like this and now we can select these faces right there press i to inset to create an engine of sorts um this will be very simple you can of course replace the model for something else i made some spaceships before so maybe go and look through my other videos to find one so this is everything we should be needing so let's tweak the animation a little bit further i will switch here to the animation workspace and switch this part here to the graph editor and as always, I will add some procedural animation. So with the ship selected, let's press I and insert location keyframe. And here we can remove, for example, Y location, I won't need that. And with the Z location active, let's press N, go to the modifier section and insert some noise. And we can extend the scale a little bit to something like 20 and reduce the strength. So if you play the animation, the ship is hovering a little bit and of course you can do the same for the X location. So go here 
add some noise modifier, increase the scale and reduce the strength maybe even more. So there is a subtle movement from side to side. Um, if you want this to loop nicely, you can restrict the frame range from 1 to 120 here and some blending in and out. So it looks the same in the start and end of the animation. And we can do the same for the Z location, of course. Okay, so that's our little animation. And of course you can do a lot of other stuff like looping the ship or like doing a barrel roll. Um, that's totally up to you. And now I will go to the shading tab and let's create some materials. So first of all, let's select our environment here and I will create a new material there and just delete the principal shader by pressing X. So we have only the output there. And now let's press shift A and let's add shader and mix shader. Let's connect it here. And we'll be mixing transparent shader with the emission shader. Just like that, let's connect them. And as a filter, we'll be using the Fresnel node. So let's press Shift A and let's add input and Fresnel. And let's set the IOR to something like 1.3. And now let's press Shift A and let's add converter color ramp that will help us to tweak the Fresnel node and just connect it here to the factor of the mix shader. And now let's change the emission to something like orange or so. And let's add some strength, something like 10. And now let's play with this gradient here. So we should be able to filter out parts of the mesh like that. Of course, there is not much information there. So what we can do is to go to the modifiers tab and add the bevel modifier to our level. And in the geometry, I will switch this to arc for some better corners. And now you can see um, these edges that appeared. Um, that's something that will help us. And of course, this doesn't look great right now because we didn't enable transparency uh, for the EVU preview. So in the settings of the material, you can enable different blend mode. So for example, alpha hashed. So you can see this transparency going on here. And I don't like this whole cutout on the Boolean modifier created. So let's go to the modifiers tab and let's try to switch the solver to fast. And this is more to my liking. I want only this planar geometry um, here. Of course, when you play this, there might be some uh, little issues with the mesh, like blinking and appearing. So maybe you would need to play with these settings or maybe exact with some different uh, settings like self intersection might work for you. And also you can play with the scale and size of this funnel and the level to get the best possible results. So I won't lie to you. Um, this might not work perfectly for you right away, um, but in the fast settings, it mostly works and you can see the result here. And by tweaking this color ramp, you can see how much of the level is actually visible. And to actually see what's going to be in the animation, um, we'll need some camera. So let's press N and I will use ISOCAM add-on. You can find the link in the description and download it if you haven't already. And I will enable true ISOCAM so we can see our results here in the real time. And now you are able to see what we get from that Fresnel node when we are tweaking these settings. Okay, so something like this will be enough. And now let's press Alt H to unhide our funnel. Um, just select it, tab in, and I will press X and delete faces. I want to remove that top face and maybe even the bottom one. Um, we'll see about that later. And now tab out and let's add a new material for that one as well. And here I'll be mixing some gradient texture um, with the mix shader. So it'll be similar setup, but I want to leave the principal shader here. So let's just move it aside, press shift A and let's add shader and mix shader right here. And let's press shift A and let's add that transparent shader once again to the bottom slot here. And now select the mix shader and press Ctrl T. And this will work only if you had Node Wrangler enabled. So again, check the list of the add-ons in the description. You will see what you need to enable and then Ctrl T should create the texture setup, but we won't be using image texture. So just select that one, press X to delete and just press Shift A and let's add texture and gradient texture. Right here, connect the mapping and now let's press Shift A and let's create a color ramp again. Let's connect it and now connect this to our factor. So again, to be able to see what we're having here, we'll use Node Wrangler's shortcut. 
control shift and click with the left mouse button so we can click the gradient texture and you can see this is all black now first of all we'll need to change this from uv to generated and we are already getting some gradient but we'll need to introduce some rotation on the y-axis so let's rotate this 90 degrees on y and you can see now we have a gradient going from black to white from the bottom to top and of course you can play with the position on the x-axis if you wish something like that and then if you control shift click the color ramp you can see the result of that and you can additionally tweak this here and i want to make this more subtle so move the white somewhere here and create a new control point with a little bit of light gray color just like that and that should be enough and now if you control shift click the mix shader you should see the result of course the transparency isn't enabled so go to the material settings and enable some alpha hashed blend mode here as well so you actually see what's happening there this doesn't look like much but in the cycles it will look much better trust me and now let's move to the principal shader and i want to introduce some alpha blending here as well so it's not so strong and enable some emission color for this part as well just like that and now let's have a look so let's go to the render settings and i will switch these to cycles enable gpu and enable some denoising i will hit zero for the camera view and i will select the camera make this closer so in the camera settings i will set this to something like 10 or the graphic scale and hold z and switch to rendered so this is something we have here if you play the animation you can see the ship moving and our level um, basically running by uh, this subtle emission shader and this really looks like a hollow projection and if you want to add to that effect you can create a new material for the ship and introduce some transmission to it and reduce the roughness tiny bit maybe change its color so in the end you will have a translucent ship here going through this um, of course you can add another material for the engine so let's tab in and i will select these two faces right there and assign this material and create a new one there let's switch this to emission and maybe this can be blue so it's clearly different and i will set this to something like five and you have an effect like this here um, of course we need to add another materials for the rest of the scene so let's reset the cursor to world origin let's press shift a and let's add a plane now let's scale it up just like this and you can see this emission there and a large portion of this emission is created by the environment so by increasing strength to something like 50 um, for the environment you can get a lot of lighting from that and now i'll just press shift a and add an area light just like that move it up a tiny bit maybe make it a little bit larger and let's set this to something like 250 so we have some light or maybe even 500 and um, that should be okay and now let's create some color for the background maybe we can increase the roughness a little bit and let's add some color to the gaming console if you want it to look a little bit vintage you can add like a gray color um something like that and then select this top part and add like a beige and click assign that should work nicely maybe a little bit more brown tone just like that and to add some visual contrast and interest you can add a red material for these buttons and maybe some metal material for this part here as well okay and to make this look a little bit better um, of course we can add some bell modifier there as well and switch this to arc so we have better corners and let me take this and move it up a little bit so we can see that emission at the bottom and of course we can go to the world settings increase the lightness of the world and give it some blue or violet tone to mix this up a tiny bit and now let's just move the camera up and basically this is the gist of it um this is what i did to create that animation you saw 
at the beginning. Of course, there are a lot of mistakes and tweaks involved. Um, so you probably have to go through some kind of process to get the better result in the end. But I really hope this will help you to create a short and funny animation like this. And when you're finished, you can just go to the output settings, set up your folder right here, switch to the FFmpeg and encode directly into MP4 container. And now it's time to just press Ctrl F12, and wait for the animation to finish and enjoy it. And of course, you can go to the render settings and enable motion blur uh, to get the most of your animation. So that's it for today's tutorial. I know it was a handful and mouthful, but there were a lot of details. Nevertheless, I really hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, please leave the like. It will really help me. And again, if you're new and you want to see more, please hit that subscribe. Thank you all for watching and have a wonderful day.